was in a straddle. Thomas, I'm up for a beer if you are. Don't. There's something going on, mate. You got uniforms and dogs? Dogs? Yeah, mate. They ain't flaming poodles. <laughs> Where was I when it happened? I was in number three crying. I've been hanging out for number three for months and you know, then this. I've never been so scared in my life. Get down, please. You're no longer employed by this company. Give me the keys to the crane. Give me the keys. Do? What could I do? They rang on the mobile. I'm dead to the world down on the farm in the caravan with Gwen. I went back to sleep. I think it was the last time for the year. Hey, Legs. There's a bloke down here with a cute little bunny dog. <laughs> I think I might kill him. Dogs, for Christ's sake, in every port in the country. What sort of evil genius thinks of something like that? I was asleep. The people don't believe me when I tell them that. They say, uh, how can you mastermind something like that and then sleep through it? But uh, I was uh, dreaming, actually, about this mad old Hungarian refugee I worked for as a kid. He uh, employed a lot of local kids uh, well, we were cheap, of course. And he'd get us out in his market garden, 3 a.m. in the Mittagong winter, freezing our balls off, cutting celery. <laughs> he used to say, work a little harder, bastard boys. <laughs> Never forget it. Come on, bastard boys, work harder. Stoppage, mate. Mate, if I was to call a stoppage, it'd be your lucky day. You earn twice a yearly salary scabbing. Union coming through, the Greyhound. I can't. What about him? You going to go to him? No, bloody way. What about Rick? You fucking dickhead. What are you going to do here, Chuck? Well, mate, once and only once, mate. Look at Paul for now. All right, you like your sprung? Rumour up with management, you've been nicking the brass taps again. You're just in time, mate. We're sticking pins in the voting forms for the election. Uh, you reckon young Mac here deserves a go? Well, they say we get the officials we deserve, so uh, I'd say you lot of ugly mugs deserve, Sean. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Kempsey, I'd like you to meet my son, Brendan. Good to meet you. G'day. He's just come on casual. Good. Can the union do something about the pool table? I've been asking for a week to get the felt replaced, and nothing's happened. The old man thought we might call a national stoppage over it. Well, I've pulled him for less, son. <laughs> <laughs> hey, where's the podge? He's not still crook, is he? No, nah, he's on the nick. I didn't hear that, and neither did you. Oh, yeah, that's right. Once you become a union man, you get selective amnesia. What's the nick? <laughs> <laughs> Management's still going on about crane rates? Mate, I tell you, if Chris Corrigan had his way, you blokes, you'd be up in those cranes for seven hours straight. You'd be eating your lunch with one hand, driving the crane with the other, and using the opposable big toe on your left foot to hold your todger while you're pissing a bottle, among other things. Anyway, how's the home life? Yeah, good. She's staying at her mum's. 
I saw the kids on the weekend. She wouldn't even come out of the house. Oh, well. You ever want some of Gwen's famous lasagna, door's always open. Give you a decent feed, at least. Thanks. The Minister for Workplace Relations, Peter Reed. The Australian waterfront is an international joke. We are laughably behind world's best practice. We should be achieving crane rates of 25 container movements per hour, and instead we're at a miserable 15. Our wharfies get paid $75,000 a year for working eight hours a week. Talk about lifestyles of the rich and infamous. In a globalised, competitive marketplace, this is a sick joke. John Coombs? Yeah, who's this? A friend. You on your own? Can you talk? Yeah, hey, I can talk. Okay, listen carefully. I'm calling from Canberra. The shit's about to hit the fan. Yeah, I'm listening. First thing, stay off the fixed phones. They've got them tapped. Just to speak digital to digital. Get a copy of the Army newspaper. There's a recruitment ad in there. They're gonna bust you. Well, who's doing all this? They're going to bring in military people to take over the waterfront. They're going to train people in Dubai. Well, and why are you telling me? To be honest, I think you people are your own worst enemies, but this is beyond the pale. I've got to go. I'll call when I can, but things are going to... I think I've made a new friend, Gwenny. Wait a moment, will you? All right, they're wharf jobs. They've got to be. Put the passports through in five minutes flat. They're smoothing the way for serving soldiers to go as well. How far up does this go? How far do you want to go? Well, let's start at the top. Well, you can start with a PM. Howard? Howard's in this? From Howard down. Listen, I can't call anymore. People can hear me. I'll pass you on to someone else. Talk to him. He knows a lot. Jesus. Hey, Billy, how are you? Good on you. Hey, young Ray. How you been, mate? That's the way. Hey, John. <laughs> Worst bloody day of my life the day Bill Kelty poached you. My protege here. <laughs> From Howard down. Oh, I knew they were coming after us, but I never thought they'd resort to bastardy like this. Okay. Uh, if you want to smash a union, you've got to find an alternative workforce. There's no way they could train a scab workforce anywhere in the country without us knowing about it. So they're going offshore. You think it's Corrigan? Wouldn't know a good peanut if it fucked him. All right, well, let's say it is an existing operator. Say it's Corrigan. Once you've got two workforces, what do you do with the one you've already got? So we've got a government up to its neck in a plot to throw 2,000 legitimately employed taxpayers out of a job? No, 
whoever it is, they can't get around the unfair dismissal rigs. They play silly buggers with me, I'll shut the whole place down. Month before Christmas, I'll close every fucking port in the country. Yeah, John, I don't think that's the way to play it, mate. You what? Well, we've got to be a bit smart about this. Um, fuck, 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 fuck. I've always admired your capacity for disciplined thought, Greg. Mate, that was disciplined thought. All right. We've got to get this into Parliament and ambush the bastards. But I can't fight this alone. Look, we're too small. I'm going to need the ACTU. Mate, you're going to need the whole bloody Labor movement and then some. John Coombs. I've got some documents that might interest you. Well, yeah, go on. What sort of documents? John Thompson reports they've dismissed calls for a boycott of Churchill. The latest comments to fuel the debate over John. the federal government's neighbor. You sitting down? Um, I'm ironing my shirt, actually. You're a cool customer, I'll give you that. Hey, listen, I've had another call. Not the usual bloke. It's getting too hot for him, he says. I'm calling this one friend number two. Now, you ready for this? He told me to get someone to the Edamoga pub in Queensland. Says he's got documents that'll bring down the government. The Edamoga? Not that fucking sticky floored tourist joint up on the Sunshine Coast for 10 bucks a beer. Mate, whoever this mob is, they're all class. What have we got? What have we Contracts. Hmm. Well, they're confidential. Oh, look. Oh, God. Training program. Dubai Port Authority. All major credit cards accepted. Jesus. Who is this? Goons. They're ex army. SAS. Okay, okay so. Jesus. Who's got the skills to operate heavy machinery and who's tough enough to handle it if there's a bit of biffo from the union? Who else do you get? The military. It's Corrigan. It's got to be. The rapacious fucking merchant banker. Hey, guess who's got the uh, super fun Christmas lunch? You haven't got much time. This says they're flying out on the 3rd. That's five days. Yeah, all business being done. Uh, I declare this meeting closed. What's the time, Frank? 1.15. 1.15 p.m. and suggest we retire to Edna's table where they have our usual reservation. Yes, in the corner, so the good working folk of Sydney don't see you lot consorting with the enemy. <laughs> so, uh, how's business, Chris? Well, you tell me. Have a look at my share price. You lot are sending me broke. I might sell up on the waterfront and... Uh, dedicate yourself to philanthropy. I was going to say I might sell up on the waterfront and go back to my first love. Chickens. Oh, good Pinot. You socialists know a good drop when you sniff one. Bred uh, chickens as a kid. Thank you. Sold them to the local Mittagong butcher three years in a row. Nice little earner. Oh, not bad. Used to caponise them, you know, desex them so they'd uh, get plumper. Trouble is, they discovered the drug I was using started getting into humans and desexing them as well. Not an entirely bad thing in the population of Mittagong in hindsight. <laughs> Cool as a cuke, mate. Not a slip. Yeah, well, he's hardly going to say fair cop. I done it, is he? How was the Pino? <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, and we need to coordinate media coverage of these goons flying out to Dubai with springing the trap in question time. We've checked with Qantas and Emirates, and there is a block booking from Melbourne to Dubai on the third. Uh, it's got a high-level security classification. Yeah, no, it's the one, for sure. And there's a leak from Defence Department, same stuff. Soldiers training in Dubai. Uh, no, no, I'm just picking up Anna. Yep. I've got two words for you, mate. Daffy Duck. Anna, Daffy Duck. Daffy Duck. Hey, John, can I call you back? I'm just picking up Anna. Okay. okay. Well, All right, mate, I'll speak to you soon. Bye. Hello, beautiful. See you, Anna. Bye, Cecilia. Thank you, Cecilia. Come on, sweetie. Okay. Uh, Petra's got your room ready for you. Why don't you take this down and I'll organise some dinner. Anna, are those insoles still hurting? A bit. How are you two? Hi, Greg. Clara, where's your mum?
Okay, what have we got? Doesn't look good? Hmm? It looks like a huge ball of fire. Yes, that fireball is going to collide with the earth. Great heavens. That'll mean the end of the world. Hi, kids. Yes. Hi, Pet. Hi, I'm late. Welcome home. <laughs> In there waiting to pounce. Wait till your tongue's stuck to the roof of your mouth like a stale communion wafer, then they pounce. I'm not Catholic. You ready? Um, it's ten past two. At just about this moment, 36 either former or serving Australian military officers are waiting to board a plane to the United Arab Emirates. There they'll be joined by a second group and the whole contingent will be trained in absolute secrecy but with full knowledge and cooperation of the federal government to take up jobs on the waterfront. <clears throat> Our sources are rock solid, ladies and gents. Now, if you don't believe me, call the Travelodge out at Tullamarine and say the word Daffy Duck. I kid you not, it's the password, it'll get you through. You have to understand this government is allowing its serving officers to be used as industrial mercenaries to launch an unprecedented and relentless assault on a legitimate Australian trade union. How do you know the government's involved? The government knows What's your source? Industrial mercenaries. Is Chris Corrigan involved? I wonder. It is still in doubt whether the men are to take up jobs offshore or, as is more likely, as strike breakers in Australian ports. Assuming the latter, the men have been described by the union as industrial mercenaries. Excuse me, sir. Yeah, I'm the leader of the opposition. My question is to the Minister for Industrial Relations and Small Business. What knowledge do you have of this covered operation to recruit a force of industrial mercenaries from the ranks of the military? And when did you first become aware of it? Honourable Minister for Workplace Relations and Small Business. Uh, Mr Speaker, the answer is I'm not aware of it at all. Minister, what knowledge do you have of the covert Dubai industrial mercenaries operations and when did you first become aware of it? I very much doubt whether there are any ADF personnel involved in, uh, in Dubai. Had any discussions with Michael Wells, Peter Kilfoyle, or any representatives of Finn West Proprietary Limited or International Port Services Training Group Proprietary Limited regarding the deployment of an alternative labour force on the Australian waterfront. Mr Speaker, I must say I don't know any of those names of either the companies or the individuals that the member has asked me of. So the answer is no. Well, I think I'm on record as having admitted frustration at the pace of waterfront reform. Uh, we've been trying to negotiate with the union for months on the issue of productivity increases and frankly it's like we're stuck in quicksand. And would your company be involved in anything like this? I mean that's the opposition's central allegation that you're using ex-commando, ex-military army types to break a strike. Well it's just so hypothetical a proposition that I can't I, I can't respond to it. I mean this is the first that I've heard of the circumstance. I, I'm not <laughs> can't respond to it. I mean, this is the first that I've heard of the circumstance. I'm not sure... You're lying, Chris. John. We've beaten the bastards, Greggy. Ah, running a marathon, John, not a sprint. Are you in that flaming bird cage again? They sell for 30 bucks a pop, you know. It's a rare species. It's my retirement plan if the bum ever falls out of the labour movement. Retirement plan, my ass. You even think about retiring on me, brother, and I'll... You know, when I first went to the MUA, they had to have a special vote of the National Executive. How can we contemplate polluting the ranks with this wetback? He's never lifted a wolfie's hook in his life. He's an utter fucking demic, for God's sake. <laughs> This union will fight till its last man to preserve its traditions, always has. That's why the Libs want to smash it. They know they only need to get non-union blokes in one port in the country and we're dead. I look at John Coombs. He's been working since he was 14. It's all he's ever done. And this jockey-sized little whippet with an intermediate certificate is the only thing standing between those traditions Total annihilation. There we go. All right, then. All right. 
We're ready? Yeah. Good on you. Sure, Let's take off. Take off. Beauty. I'm married to a wolf here. I've been married for 30 years. What's your name, darling? Gwen. Well, Gwen, you're on a pretty good wicket, aren't you, love? He's only at work a few hours a week, then comes home with a monster pay pack. If he hasn't blown it in the pub on the boss's time, that is. You're wrong, Ian. You're as wrong as wrong can be. The Wharfies I know are good, loyal, kind blokes. They do their jobs, they love their kids, and whatever they get paid, they deserve more. And you are a pea brain stooge for a government full of card carrying Baptists. That's it. We're down for our next to weaken the Maritime Union of Australia is to weaken the union movement as a whole. And the day we give away that support is the day we rip out our own heart and leave it pumping in irrelevancy. The only promise to John Howard is this. If you seek to destroy the Maritime Union of Australia, we will be there. And you won't have a picket of 30 people or a picket of 40 people. You won't have a picket of 500 people. You will have the biggest picket that has ever been assembled in the history of this country. Pretty good, eh? You're a bit of an ambitious young dick, aren't you, Greg? Never denied it. You know you're considered as next in line for my job? You're seen as the most promising young official in years. You do want my job, don't you? Yeah, I want it. I mean, I don't know if I can do it. No, of course you can't. You're not ready. That's what I told your fan club. <clears throat> and it's never got anyone from the left before. I'll vote the way I tell them to vote. You're not ready. All right, I'll let you run this. You call the shots, I'll support you. But this is big. The government is going to throw everything they've got at us. Stuff up, the other unions will drop like chocos off the shithouse wall. You get us out of this one alive, Greg. Do that, this job might still exist when you are ready for it. Wow. You want it, don't you? I'd lose the limb for it. But? It's a poison chalice. Um, union membership, non-compulsory and in decline. Legislation that makes industrial action almost impossible and the most stridently anti-union government we've had in history. Yep, it's Camelot. And I'd lose a limb for it. Tonight, I'll read you Das Kapital. In the original, right? I'm getting hard just thinking about it. Man, I'm the class nerd, you know? I learnt my negotiation skills trying to stop the sharpie, stick my head down the dunny. <laughs> if I fuck this thing up, we're toast. Then don't fuck it up. Hey, five minutes in bed. Productivity. Is that the only word left in the English language? What about safety? Look the camera straight in the eye. Avoiding eye contact with the viewer can suggest dishonesty. Safety. Because that's what the three for two work practice is all about. Don't lick your lips. <laughs> Look shifty. Three drivers, two cranes. Continuous work operation, sensible meal breaks, work spells that are efficient and safe. You spend eight hours straight sitting in a straddle with your head at right angles to your body and see how you feel. You're pointed. What? You pointed. I did not point. Don't point, it's threatening. And three for twos using arcane language. Don't point, stare down the barrel, don't lick your lips, keep it simple. I mean, is there anything else, Miss Smarty Pants? Yeah, keep your jacket on. Viewers don't like sweat stains. <laughs> and so, I come to London today to ask for your help. The International Transport Federation is one of the most powerful international labour movements in the world. The uh, Maritime Union of Australia is a tiny, proud union with a huge history and an even bigger heart. 
Right now, our tiny, proud union needs your muscle. Stop these scabs being trained offshore. Threaten to close down the port of Dubai. No scabs on the waterfront. In Sydney, Melbourne, Fremantle, Dubai, or any other port in the world. Hello. Merry Christmas, comrade. London calling. John. We nailed him, Greggy. The Federation leaned on the ambassador for the Arab Emirates over SMT and cucumber fucking sandwiches. The scabs go or there won't be a single container across your docks. They cancelled their visas within 24 hours. You should have seen his face, mate. It was a beautiful thing. Cucumber sang a half in, half Have you been out. drinking, John? No, mate. It's jet lag. I'm at the ITF Christmas party, Mr. Pope Police. I keep telling you, mate, I'm not Catholic. Yeah, well, you might want to think about converting, old son. Solidarity forever, Greg. Solidarity forever, brother. Yeah, but I've still got a couple hours of OT though. This weekend, but we, we, we didn't even make any plans for this weekend, Janine. A soccer camp. Shit, I forgot the shitting bloody soccer camp. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, Janine. Shift in this state? Liquid lunch. Come on, you dumb prick. Let's get you out of here. Not happy, Mac. Not freaking happy, son. How long has this been going on? Since she left. Oh, yeah. And you're the only bloke whose missus has ever done a flit, eh? Hey, you're standing for election to the greatest union in the country. You got a tradition to uphold. You're walking in the steps of Jim Hurley and Taz Bull. They'd be turning over in their graves. If they were dead. I voted for you. Yeah, well, you backed the wrong horse, didn't you? I'm a social leper, didn't you know? I'd clear a room in five minutes flat. Come on, take a look at yourself. What's wrong with this picture? No wonder she pissed off. The only thing right with this picture is my sainted Nan's bloody chamber pot, and it's seen better days. The Maritime Union, the United Arab Emirates, has denied entry visas for what the Union described as industrial mercenaries. Yay! Hey! After ten hey, hey! discussions with representatives What's this? of the International Trans Some sort of corroboree. and the MUA, the UAR reconsidered its position on the training of foreign waterside workers. It chose to withdraw the visas rather than face retaliatory action from the ITF in its principal port of Dubai. The men were to take part in a training program on the Dubai docks, which the union alleges was designed to equip them for a possible strike-breaking role here in Australia. Sorry, mate, sorry. Bloody Qantas. You all right? Yeah, good, mate, good. OK. So, oh. whatever happens, we've got to stay cool in there. Oh, right? yeah, yeah. Yeah. You seen the prick? No. For the umpteenth time, I know nothing about training a workforce in Dubai or anywhere else. But if someone wanted to, would you blame them? You blokes have been lying, cheating, rorting and ripping off the system for decades. Look, if this is about the three for two, it's the only way to ensure continuous operation. Stop it and the whole port shuts down for meal breaks. What'll that do to your productivity rates? Three for two is an excuse for the nick and you know it. Well, you won't hear me or John defending the nick. But you can't expect John in an office in Sussex Street to control what's happening in Fremantle. If it's happening, it's up to the port managers to stop it. This is bullshit. 
Now, I don't know what Corrigan's been bloody telling you, but I'll tell you something. We've been trying to work with him for a year. Now, we offered him a productivity bonus. The blokes that get their rates up get a bonus. Simple. I turned his nose up at that like we'd put a dead rat on his cornflakes. And I will not subject my blokes to neck injuries. A band-aid to fix cancer. That's what you offered. <sighs> You're dinosaurs, you blokes. You know that, don't you? What are you going to do when the farmers finally get jack of their exports sitting on the docks rotting? Hmm? What are you going to do when they come marching down from the bush and take over your jobs? Hmm? You lying piece of shit. Agreed, Pig agreed. ignorant, also ran suburban fucking abacus. Agreed, How agreed. much is the big end of town paying your election fund, eh? What the fuck are you getting out of wedging the community apart? Oh, yeah, it's fun, isn't it, eh? Laughing up your smug suburban lawyer's sleeve while you chuck honest people out of job? I think this meeting is over. We're gonna fight you. We're gonna fight you with every weapon we've got, and you fucking know we've got them too, you spineless piece of shit. And if that scares you, why don't you ask your mate, the PM? He might buy you a backbone for your next birthday. It's probably too fucking late to buy you a conscience. Bit of advice, son. Don't point. Steer down the barrel. And use words the mums and dads can understand. Well, that can't happen again. Cannot happen again. I didn't know you had it in you, mate. I'm proud of you. What did I call him? <laughs> A pig ignorant also ran suburban effing abacus. <laughs> <laughs> I'll never forget it. No, oh, fuck. Tomorrow with Corrigan, we've got to play it smarter. Listen, if Chris Corrigan gets on my wick, I'll shut him down. I brought him to heel last time and he knows I'll do it. John, we can't play it that way anymore. The legislation's changed. We call a stoppage, they find us out of existence. So what do you suggest? We'll fight you with every weapon we've got. What weapons have we got left if we can't strike? I don't know, that's the trouble. Well, I'll tell you. No, but I do know the old days are gone. The old hairy-chested stuff, it's not going to work anymore. Yes, we controlled the waterfront once. Not anymore. We can't outmuscle them. We've got to outmaneuver them. You're saying my record's stuck? No. I'm saying we're operating in a completely new legal and industrial environment. We've got to find a different way. You keep way. saying that, but what? 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 <sighs> How's Anna? Um, yeah, she's okay. We're still doing the week about thing. At least in this house, they've all got a bit more space. Maybe I'm stuck in a rut past it because I can't see a new and different way falling from the sky. John, I didn't say you passed it. Oh, well, what did you say, eh? Is it old age? Is that what it is? You think I'm past it? All right, I'll tell you what. Excuse me. I've got to go. Where's the bathroom? Which way? Third on the That right. way, thanks. Oh, sorry, Mum. Mum, can you sign Annie's excursion form? Good night. Night, Clara. Night, Clara. There's life in John yet, you know. And I'm an overeducated dickhead, right? I do like the new house. <laughs> we want to know if you're involved in Dubai. Well, does it matter? It's collapsed, hasn't it? Were you involved? No. Because if you were, everything we've offered is off the table. Hmm. Didn't hear you offering to stop your members working half a shift and then nicking off to the pub on full pay. Didn't hear you offering to stop them snoozing in the crane for an entire shift so we'd be forced to pay them hey, overtime. Hey, hey, I talked for an entire day in Melbourne to get that last enterprise agreement up and you yeah, know and it. Your members have thumbed their noses at it. They're not abiding by it at Web Dock and you know it. And what about the Sydney branch? It is completely out of control. Not true. Not true. Chris, we just want to know what you're planning. Well, I'll tell you what I want, if that helps. I want to be able to look my shareholders in the eye and tell them that they can trust me. I want the people who work for me to do a decent day's work for a decent day's pay. That workforce down there is miserable, and not because they're exploited, as you would have them believe, but because of archaic work practices, inefficiencies, enforced delays, ridiculous, convoluted chains of command. Safety regulations? Because imposed mediocrity, 
forces them to go home every single day of their working life knowing that they haven't done their best. People want to take pride in their work. I want them to be able to, but John, 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 you won't let them. Chris, no, we all agree that motherhood is a wonderful thing. However, we just want to know what you're fucking planning. Not hard. Tell you something else I want. I want the company to start turning a profit. Now I know that's a dirty word to a socialist. In fact, I will test what good socialist you are. I will sell you the company for a dollar. In fact, I'll give you the dollar. Of course, it's going broke, but if you own it, you, uh, you might be able to turn it around. Here you are, genuine offer. Patrick, the Australian stevedore, going for a dollar. Take it or leave it. Chris, for Christ's sake, stop talking shit and just tell us what the fuck is going on. Ah, oh, well, you'll, you'll just have to wait and see, won't you? Good afternoon, Patrick. Can I help you? And who may I say is born? And you're from... He's in it up to his neck. We're dead. I'm gonna pick up Anna. Well, I was supposed to pick up Anna daycare by six. If someone can help? No, John, we don't all have fucking stay-at-home wives. Oh, sorry. Taxi! No, no, I got people in it, mate. We'll get you one. Taxi! Whoa, there you go. Go, boy, go. Thanks, mate. Thanks. All right, I'll get some pollen done and... Well, there's some focus groups. Some what? Focus groups. Focus what? Focus groups. Airport, thanks. Uh, Ted. Hi, um, I know you're stuck in that conference, but uh, my fucking plane's been delayed, and if the traffic's bad in Melbourne, I'm just not gonna get to pick up Anna in time. Um, if you get this message, could you... What? I don't know what I expect to do about it. Um, sorry, I'll call you when I land. All right, bye. Anna? Cecilia? Sweetheart, I'm so sorry. You okay? I called her mum and she said it was your week. Thanks for sticking around, Cecilia. I really appreciate it. No worries, Mr. Combe. Hey, um, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. I'm really sorry, Anna. Who said that? Yeah, well, it's, um, it's important stuff at work, you know. Come on, hop on. You know, it was raining in Sydney as well. I know. Oh. Sydney has a higher rainfall than Melbourne, and Melbourne has a higher portion of rainy days. Is that right? Yep. Oh, there we go. Where's the car? Leak from the construction union. Someone wants to hire cranes for use on the Melbourne waterfront. Message to call Paul. G'day, Paul. Yeah, yeah, I heard you wanted to hire some cranes, mate. Yeah, my name's Eric. Yeah, hey, hey, we can do that, no problem. Listen, though, mate, is, uh, is the Wharfies Union OK about this? You know, a bunch of mongrels. Oh, it's sweet. Oh, good oh. So, mate, you're from, uh, National Farmers Federation. Hey, good on you, mate. I really admire what you fellas stand for. Now we can reveal there is a new plan to bust the monopoly of the Maritime Union of Australia. This time, it's run out of the offices of the National Farmers Federation. Fuck it, he's the farmers. Here, the NFF registered three companies. We are not going to... The men behind the companies are National Farmers Federation President Donald McGecky. NFF Deputy Director James Ferguson and former Industrial Relations Director for the NFF, Paul Houlihan. Where is everyone? Come on, Dreamy, draws you're on. 
Mate, I broke the land speed record getting here and Captain Hook in the office tells me to bugger off. There's no shift. Twilight's cancelled, apparently. No shift? Uh, What's going on? Name's Killfoil. Here to install some security on web number five. We're expecting a war or something? Something. Games there too. Maybe we can have a go when you get home from school, eh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I missed you, mate. You shouldn't have done that, Sean. It's too much. Want to set it up now? Yeah. All right. I'll show you how it works, eh? Uh, isn't it better if we take it back to Nan's? No. Go on, put it with your other things. Well, do you want me to set it up there or what? Um, look, I'd rather. Mum, we'd rather you just took Alex out and stuff. I haven't seen him since before Christmas, Janine. That's a whole bloody month. And you won't even let... Shit. Shit, sorry, shit. Hello? Sean, it's John Coombs. I need you down at Web Dock. Pronto. What? Why? There's been a lockout at Patrick. You won the vote, mate. You're the union rep. <laughs> You're bloody kidding me, John, aren't you? Get down there. No booze, no violence. If there's any violence, I'll kill you. Yeah. You're looking at the new MUA state official. It's kind of funny. I don't was that. These unions are about people, Sean. Bill, lock out at web dock. Okay, go. It's yours, Greg. And don't fuck it up. The chairman of Patrick Corporation, Chris Corrigan, has announced that he has agreed to lease surplus capacity and equipment at Melbourne's Web Dock to the National Farmers Federation. Oh, after two years of fruitless negotiations, uh, we, we've decided to take action. It's our only chance to stem losses uh, of what are now millions of dollars. The NFF is establishing a new stevedoring operation staffed by non-union labour to be known as producers and consumers stevedores. It's not legitimate. It, it, it's another part of a Reese diabolical plan to create mayhem on the Australian waterfront. Come on, you scab mongrels. I'll have you. I said I'll fucking have you. Watch your back, you I'll oh, have you, all right. Fudge. Oh, go, Mr. Combo. He's given these scabs a bit of their own medicine. I hope I didn't offend you at all. Not at all, mate. Keep up the good work. Um, the other bloke's still inside? Yeah, yeah. You're going to need a silver tone to get him out, though. Someone snuck in a couple of slabs. All right. As you were. Um, ACTU? Who's there? Combo's here. Who? What? Greg Combo, you bogans. The ACTU, you ever heard of them? The affiliation of trade unions formed to devise policy and lobby on behalf of the labour movement. <laughs> Shut up and have a beer. Thank you very much. G'day, fellas. G'day, uh, mate. Hey, mate. What were these? Um, oh, no, thanks, mate. Um, well, I guess you're all wondering why I've called you here. <laughs> um, look, Things are happening pretty fast here. But if we let things ball over, I think we're rooted. Uh, and we need, to be, uh, we need to be a little bit smart and a little bit strategic about it. Listen, mate, we're not leaving this room yeah, 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 yeah. until those fucking scabs are out of there. Yeah. Yeah. Corrigan locks us on the other side of the gate. It'll take Semtex to get us back in. And uh, what do you hope to achieve by staying here? Hey? Eh? For how long? Because sooner or later, you're going to get very hungry and very on the nose. It's OK, mate. Legs is already gone for more pizza and beer. Yeah. Come on, fellas. Do you lot know the drill? Most of you have been at more stoppages than I've had hot dinners. Now, we need to get some sort of discipline happening here. All right? Now, I'm here representing Bill Kelty, OK? 
Now, the MUA has a strategy, and the ACTU is behind you all the way. Whatever's going on here, we'll get to the bottom of it and we'll take it on. But we need you blokes to work with us. Now, that means coming outside of here, coming outside the gates and staying calm. It's good we don't trust you, mate. I'm just playing. Greg, I know you mean well, son, but that's not the way we do it here at the MUA. Mate, I fucking worked for the MUA. I learned everything I know at the feet of Taz Bull. There's not a fucking thing you can tell me about how the MUA does things that I don't know ten times over. So shut the fuck up and help me talk these bikes out of here before they're completely rat assed and we've got Armageddon on our hands. Hey, uh, guys. Um, so, some of you know me, some of you don't. I'm Sean McSwain, state rep. Look, we've got, we've got to get off the piss. Stay calm and uh, just get motivated here. Oh, yeah. Fuck off! No, 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 they're out of the amenities block, but it's ugly. You want to set up a conference call with Kerms? You probably want to call them all out. Maybe P&O too. I don't want anyone out, Bill. Look, we'll talk when I want to get back, but I'll be advising John to keep them all working. Are you on drugs? You said I'd make the call. All right. Do it your way. You might think us office types don't know how it feels. Natty ties, poly shoes, iron shirts. You want to chuck Molotov cocktails over the fence. You want to create mayhem so they'll all know how it feels. But I'm going to ask you to do something much harder. If we use violence, if we get pissed and pull on a Barney, as much as we might want to, we'll be playing right into the hands of these bastards. They can say to the world, in front of all these cameras here, see, the Wolfies really are a bunch of thugs. Let's not give them that chance. In 20 minutes, a van's gonna be coming through. It's gonna be full of security guards. Now, I'm going to ask you to do the hardest thing. Do not touch that van. You can yell, you can scream, you can say whatever you like, but do not resort to physical violence. The whole country's watching you. Show them you've got discipline. And that you know that every other unionist all across the country, tens of thousands of them are on your side and that you know, whatever it takes, you will be back inside that gate. We can't just do nothing. They'll tear the joint apart. We've got, to, we've got to pick it, we've got to call a stoppage, we've got to show them that we're fighting for them. John, that's exactly what they want. Can't you see? Reith, Howard, they're trying to provoke us into action so they can pull the Trade Practices Act down on our heads. They're playing us like mugs, and we'll be mugs if we fall into it. Hey, 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 who runs this union? You do. Yeah, but you're the big picture man, right, Greg? Why do I think that's not a compliment? You think I'm this rational fucking dickhead, don't you? All head, no heart. Always have. Well, I'm... I'm here, John. I'm looking at the fear in their faces. Well, you, th you think I've worked this hard to sell these men down the river? Maybe I've got no right. Oh, I've never worked beside them. I've never been godfather to their kids. I can't even drive a crane. But I'm not a fucking machine, John. I love these bikes. Trust me, John. Please, mate. Yeah, OK, OK. But go home and get some rest, will you? You sound like shit. What I think we need to understand here is that this is not just about the wharfies. This is about every single worker in the country. It's not just about a few hundred jobs. It's about thousands and thousands of jobs right across the country. It's not just about the maritime union. It's about every union. Because if this can happen to these workers, 
then no worker anywhere in the country is safe. As half a billion Trust me, he says. Jesus ran. Christ, I hope he's right. Because if he's not, I'm going to go down in history as the bloke who let the union be destroyed on his watch. You'll be right, Dad. Thanks, guys. How long do you think this will go for? Is that our blokes or theirs? Don't answer that. Wanna hear something funny? I just got the nod today. Mate, hearty congratulations. Thanks, mate. So remind me why we do this gig? Something about the unions underpinning the labour movement? The foundation stone upon which we build a vision of social justice and a fair go for all. What fucking knob thought that sounded like a good idea, eh? I found a horse float to keep down in for the duration. Don't reckon I'll be seeing much of my kids for a while, will I? Um... <clears throat> I remember when I first started, Taz used to say to me, Greg, no matter what they might try to tell you different, always remember... We own the waterfront. You've heard it. Read all these speeches. We won at Fair and Square back in the 40s. The waterfront's ours, brother. I don't think any of us are going to be seeing our kids for a while, mate. Mate, the you-know-what was flying in every direction. We had calls coming in from all over. Rumours you can't even imagine about what the other side was up to. One old dear called up with a story about her nephew in the backyard. It'd turn your hair, I tell you. And all the rumours came down to the same thing. The whole lot was going to hit the fan come Easter. I guess you'd call it a kind of phony war. We were trying to screw them and they were trying to screw us. To put it politely. All right, fellas, here it comes. Yeah, we don't touch the van. Is out of the place. It's a union busting scam. The federal government's behind it. But technically, you're not locked out, are you? It's only one berth at Webb Dock that Patrick has leased out. This is not, I repeat, not a lockout. It, it suits the union to say that, but if they do not return to work on the other berths at Webb Dock, we will be forced to take legal action. Upset. I was bloody ropeable. I thought the union were lying down and saying, fuck me, in any position you like. What do unions traditionally do at times like this? Um, well, we take industrial action, but... And you're not doing that, why? Well, you know why. Under the new legislation, they'd find us to Helen back. What unions do at times like this? They react. The enemy acts, the unions react. The march is stolen on... and it's good night, nurse. Well, I'm assuming you haven't come here just to tell me how to do my job, so what do you got? Get on the front foot. Attack first. With what? A bazooka? A conspiracy case. Go on. Bring an action in the federal court against Patrick the National Farmers Federation, and if I'm right and they're behind it, the government, for conspiring to diminish the terms and conditions of your guys for no other reason than that they are members of a union. Section 298K, the right to freedom of association. Howard's breaking his own law. 
take the federal government to court for conspiracy. It's never been done before, but we can do it. It's fucking visionary. We can make a statement that says government and big business can shake each other's dicks all they like, but they won't get away with it. That you cannot legally arsehole a legitimate workforce that aspiring for more and more obscene profit margins. We? I'm a Jewish kid from socialist parents that went to Melbourne Grammar. I've got all bases covered. I know how the power elite works. I know who's in bed with whose wife. And I know this government wants to shaft you guys so hard you'll never walk again. There are legal teams assembling all over town as we speak, waiting to lay you in the dirt and pick the flesh off your carcass. If we can pull this thing off, it will be the most monumentally important thing we'll ever do in our lives. Pro bono, take it or leave it. Pardon? Pro bono, it means for nothing. I'll do it for nothing. No, I know what it means. Um, <clears throat> just for the record, I'll do the Marxist raves around here, all right? Buses with the PCS men, scabs. Yeah, whatever. They'll be coming through in about a half an hour. Yeah, I want to talk to the drivers first, right? <laughs> Shit. Yeah, well, I want a guarantee of no violence. What am I, mate? Gandhi? Well, I hope not. If you've got to do the top two, mate, you're going to damn near bleed to death. Swanson, nice ship. Here for the day ship. What's this? Hey! You fucking scared dog! Dog, fuck you! Fuck you! Like the old age. Graham, how are you? Tell me, where's this hot shot whiz kid who's gonna save our bacon? Boardroom. Good on you, mate. Get the men to do what? Go back to work. On every berth at Web Dock except number five, you'll have to sooner or later. Work one end of the dock with scabs up the other while a bunch of wankers ponce around in wigs and gowns. It won't be pretty. Why the hell don't we just shut Corrigan down? He hasn't got anyone trained. We'd pull out of every Patrick dock in the country. He's stuffed. Um, yeah, John and I have been discussing this. If I call a national stoppage, I've blown the only shot I've got. We pull it on now, yeah, we've got 24 hours of chaos, but then what? Well, I've got nothing left, Bill. John's right. You have to use brains, not brawn. Coordinate your PR strategy with your industrial strategy and sue them before they sue this you. This bloke ever met a wharfie? Hang on a tick, Bill. This is where the uh, conspiracy thing comes in, isn't it? Yep, precisely. I've been trying to find an angle on this thing for weeks, Bill, and I think this is it. We're fine, mate. But our blokes aren't fine because we promised them a job. And then you've got the farmers in a web. Our blokes are like 76 proverbial spare pricks. It's a lot of pricks. What's the link between the web dock enterprise and the Dubai scheme? And what's your role? There is no link. Dubai's history, I had no role in it. As the dispute has worn on, the continuing... OK, um... One. Someone, we don't know who, tries to train the wharfies in Dubai. Two, the Farmers' Federation sets up a stevedoring company. Are they linked to Dubai? We don't know. Three, Corrigan leases them one berth at Webb. Why is he leasing his docks to competitors? None of this hangs together in any kind of pattern. We've got to find the connections and make them stand up in court. 
We're going to need a silk. Yeah, we usually use Richard. No, no. Um, no. We need a silk with right wing respectability. Well, I'd rather have one with the right politics. Of course you. You need a rock star. Someone from their own camps get the living crap out of them. Politics is irrelevant. It's the purity of the law that matters. Oh, the law. The law. With all respect, the law is an artificial construct erected by the capitalist class to ensure the system protects their own interest and maximises their own profit. Do you need proof of my credentials before you get into bed with me, Greg? My old man was a state labour MP. My mother was an organiser for the Missos Union. My stepfather's been on the Industrial Relations Commission. My great-great-uncle was Harry Bridges. There's my LP membership card. I thought my cred was pretty good. Ah, oh, but you can take the boy out of Sydney. What did your old man do? Now, uh, my old man made champagne. the joint. <laughs> um, where are the kids? Upstairs. Joe got selected for the choir. Oh, good on him. Ah, oh, hello there, Claude. Um, sorry I'm late. Well, all this glass is a problem, mate. Oh, sorry. Um, well, I've been telling Mrs Corrigan about the division of labour. Keep the kids home as much as possible. Invite their friends here rather than them go out. Do your shopping at different places. Uh, we'll send a bloke with you. Otherwise, try to run things as normally as possible. We've all got our jobs to do here. His is to fix the docks. Yours is to keep him healthy, focused and on top of things. And ours is to keep you all safe. What about school holidays? You mean Easter? Isn't that when you're... Uh, no, I want you and the kids as far away from here as possible. I second that 100%. Well, there you are. You've, uh, you've been told. You set that up, didn't you? And you must be Tali. Uh, Tali Simon, my stepfather. And my mother, Judith. Hi, Judith. Pleased to meet you. So we. <laughs> Come through. A uh, little bird tells me you've offered yourself to the union over this wet dock thing. What are you going on? Freedom of association? Conspiracy. <laughs> 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 OK. It's crazy, but it just, just might work. work. <laughs> no, I'm on a bit of a promise not to talk about it too much tonight. I've been carrying on like some kind of crazed zealot. He has, actually. We'll have to content ourselves with Josh's other peccadilloes. Has he told you about the GGs? I like horse racing. My family think it's a form of genetic weakness. You like horse racing? So, all bets are off? The odds are shortening, or um, lengthening, or whatever odds do. Now, oh, come on. Melbourne Cup, race day at Randwick. Ah, Randwick. That's another problem. Judith, leave the poor boy alone. Randwick is in Sydney, and Josh is scared of flying. <laughs> Kill me now. Thanks for tonight. Simon, well, his opinion means a lot to me. His opinion of me? <laughs> well, they liked you. I'm sorry we talked about the case so much. It'll sound conceited, but I think I was born to fight this case. Does it sound conceited? Yes. Um. <clears throat> I'm pretty high maintenance, Tally. Unfortunately, I have this fatal attraction for high maintenance women. Irresistible force makes an immovable object kind of thing. Artistic types. Now, just let me get this out before you take the piece, will you? I just... I'm sorry if this sounds hard. I can't go there with you if it's going to be the same thing. 
Oh, I'm not artistic at all. <laughs> so, do I tell them at Slater and Gordon that I'm sleeping with the enemy? You could tell them you've met the uh, enemy's mother. Dead giveaway. <laughs> Chris, you've got to come clean, but it's going to be pretty delicate stuff. Tell him not to fuck it up. I'm onto it. of Patrick Stevedore's Chris Corrigan has today made a surprise public admission. Chris Corrigan, you've consistently denied having anything at all to do with the Dubai training operation. Why did you lie? Well, what I'm telling you is that I had a limited role only in the Dubai Limited? Training. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I wonder how he defines limited. And equipment, that's all. So why did you lie? Well, I was afraid that the union would shut me down. Of course you were. <laughs> was it Finn West? Was it Peter Kilfoyle? Did you have a direct relationship with them? No. As the dispute has worn on, the continuing picket of Patrick Kilfoyle around the country has faced various... My little ring. Peter Kilfoyle. Yeah, hi, it's Greg Combe from the ACTU. Uh, we got a message you wanted to talk to us. <laughs> this is so John Le Carre. Yeah, right. Gee, suits were a good idea. Huh? At least we can get a bloody beer out of this peanut hunt. Two pots of carbon, thanks, dear. Here you go, that cover. Would have preferred water, John. Jesus Christ, Greg, you're in a flaming bloody house looking like something out of a Fletcher Jones catalogue. Just drink it. Sorry, I'm late. Just checking the exit strategy. Who to kill for? Uh, Greg Combe. And this is John. We know who you are. Exit strategy. Three steak sandwiches with a lot. Um, just one, thanks. Corrigan's a rat. Yeah, I think we're across that one. <laughs> no, 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 mate. You're not across anything. We enlist a mob of good blokes, decent blokes, to train them in Dubai. He's paying for every red cent of it. Shit hits the fan in the media. Our fellas are left high and dry, all dressed up, no place to go. Same decent blokes that were going to take our jobs, you mean? It's not the fucking point. So Corrigan paid for it. No, he's going to do you guys. It's got wall to wall security on all the docks, cameras. Top of the range surveillance, give you hundreds of grand's worth. How do you know this? <laughs> Mate, I installed it. Stuff so good you could see the blackheads in a wharfie's hero. He's gonna lock his out of Port Botany. Got all the troublemakers tabbed and followed. He's gonna skin you. Um, <clears throat> why are you telling us all this? Insurance. We take out a lot of insurance. We got documents. We got tapes. We got fingerprints. We could bust Corrigan apart. We could bust the fucking government apart. Still think you're across it? Well, it would be nice to get all that. Paulie's gonna take care of that. He's my business manager. And in case you fellas get any ideas, we're taking out insurance with you too. There's a car around the corner. We're wearing directional microphones. Anything you say or do, we've got yous. We'll give you the lot. We want 5.6 for it. 5.6? Mill. Compo for our blokes. And any trouble, we know where yous live. A 
Well, we're not free, yes, we're in. Oh, oh, God. I don't know what else that was going to do. Oh, I shit myself. <laughs> As I predicted, standard 127 action to get the men back to work at Webb, which Corrigan will win. Yep. Can we spin it out to keep Webb down as long as possible? Oh, I think so. And it might even take longer if we were to, say, subpoena the man himself. Get him on the stand as our witness. Why in blazes would we want to do that? Because we can nail him under oath. Flush him out about Dubai. Let the public see what he's up to. <clears throat> we know what he's up to, trying to smash the union with a bunch of cowboys. John, it's a PR exercise. He's been attacking our credibility for years. And if we're going to stand a snowball's chance in all this, we need the public on side. We need to make him look like the germ he is. It's message management, mate. Message management? Be buggered. He'll still win the case, and I'll still have a mutiny on my hands trying to get the blokes to work beside scabs. Yep, he'll win the case, but we'll win the public relations. And there's more than one way of skinning the cat, brother. Thanks, Josh. I think it might be time to put the meter on. Mike Wells. Uh, Mike, I need a favour. I, uh, I need to get some documents back from you. We've got some blokes who still need jobs, Chris. And you've got our invoices. I'm here at the Federal Industrial Relations Commission where Patrick Stevedores is seeking an injunction to force the men back to work. And in a piece of carefully orchestrated theatre, Chris Corrigan, Patrick's CEO, is appearing as a witness. Not for his own side, but actually subpoenaed by the union. How are you feeling today, Mr Corrigan? What will you be telling the Commission today? Mr Corrigan, you gave evidence that you dealt with the Mr Wells and Mr Kilfoyle earlier on. Is that correct? I had meetings with them, yes. And was that solely in relation to the sale of the straddle carriers? No, object. He's leading the witness. It's a bit late in the day for that, Mr Parry. He's been leading since he got on his feet. Well, frankly, I'd be grateful if someone would lead. And I think your evidence has been that not only did Patrick's involvement, as it were, in the Dubai operation go to the sale of the straddle carriers, but it went to some other aspects, did it not? The commitment to lease Webb Dock. But can you give evidence that that was the full extent of Patrick's involvement in the Dubai operation? Yes. How did you first come into contact with Mr Wells and Kilfoyle? I think I was referred to him. Who referred you to Mr Wells and Kilfoyle? Well, um, nobody referred me to Mr Kilfoyle, but uh, Mr Wells... I don't recall who referred me to him. Well, that would appear somewhat unusual. Would you agree? On such an important business... Well, hang on, hang on. This is a cross-examination. You asked a question, the answer's been given. So, for what purpose did you approach Mr Wells, Mr Corrigan? I first approached him because I had been asked to inquire about people who might be able to recruit and train suitable people, stevedoring people in Australia. For, sorry, not, um, not, not, not training in Australia, um, recruit in Australia people for stevedoring. So you approached Mr Wells in order to pursue an avenue for the recruitment of people to work in the stevedoring industry? Your Honour, this is a cross-examination. Yes. It is again traversing the same issues. This is not traversing the same issues at all. Mr Corrigan, in his evidence so far, identified his commitment, as it were, in the Dubai operation, as a commitment to lease birth number five. Yes, I recall, yes. His evidence now is that that extends to the approaching of Mr Wells for the purpose of recruiting people to work in the stevedoring industry. And I would submit that if that is not relevant to these proceedings, then I'm not too sure what is. I press the question. And I maintain my objection. He's leading. Answer the question, Mr Corrigan. What, um, what, what was the question? This is the problem we always have. What was your objective in making this contact with Mr Wells, Mr He's Cole? already answered that question. He's given you the answer to that, all right? You cannot keep asking the witness the same question. You, you need to pin him down about his financial commitments. He's already said it. That was the extent of Patrick's involvement. But there's more than one company. You need to nail him across the board. Specific, be specific. Uh, Mr Corrigan, in taking the steps that you did to approach Mr Wells, 
What financial obligations, if any, did that involve you or Patrick in terms of the recruitment of personnel? None. Well, Mr Corrigan, did um, Patrick Stevedoring accept any financial obligation at all in relation to the recruitment of personnel? No. Did uh, Lang Corporation accept any financial obligation in terms of the recruitment of personnel? No. Did you yourself personally accept any financial obligation at all in relation to the recruitment of personnel? No. Have you discussed the notion of dismissing the workforce en masse with anyone outside your company? My learned friend might have difficulty asking a non-leading question. With respect, question. that was not a leading question. Have you had any discussions with anyone about the option of dismissing the workforce en masse? I will allow the question. I think the answer has to be yes. Um, and can you remember when any of these discussions took place? I uh, remember some discussions along those lines in early 97. And who were those discussions with? I think they were with government advisers. Yeah. I've heard the name Webster mentioned. This evening, the Industrial Relations Commission ordered the men to return to work at Web Dock. What was revealed, however, in the long... Hey, come on. We did well. He copped two weeks of industrial damage and his reputation's down the tube. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my blokes have to work with a bunch of scabs. You know, I know blokes down at Botany. They busted a gut for years on the docks. I mean, I know blokes. They're dead at 50 from asbestos dust. Blokes get crushed under containers, smashed up on the steel ships. I mean, what were their lives worth? What, nothing? I mean, all we've done, stopping pig iron going to the Japs, Indonesia, apartheid. What, this is what we get? John, I want to go to the docks. What the hell for? Well, just to see the faces of the people I'm working for. Oh, don't be so bloody stupid. I mean, well, you'd either get yourself arrested or, or beaten up, probably by our own blokes. And then where would I be? Sued for assault by my own flaming lawyer. That's a great idea. Quite frankly, I don't care if they arrive by boat, by jumbo, by helicopter, by jet pilot, by walking, by running or by bus. The good news is that we have people who are today on the Melbourne docks who are training for a new job. And we're injecting some real competition into so an industry... So what? The scabs are still at birth five. Yeah, and our guys have got to go back to work on the other four berths right fucking beside them. Nice. Right, work your shift, man the picket. Same at East Swanson, that's the deal. You work your shift, you man the picket at Web Dock. Work your shift, and that miserable prick has the gall to call them bludgers. For those Australians, this is nothing short of a dream come true. Scabs. Stay away. You just want to be working with a bunch of fucking scabs. You're doing a great job. Time is to proud of yourselves. What'd you tell this bloke, Gal? What's his name? Ah, uh, Kilfoil. Just that we wanted to see the documents. Looks like Long Bay Jail. How many times do we want to point? Can we get out if we get in? <laughs> well, let's give it a bell. Well, 
Hi, what can I get you, boys? Uh, three beers, please. VB, Carlton, Coopers, Heineken. Well, Carlton's fine, thanks. Not a fucking word about drinking water. Josh Wells. Good to see you again. Great call, day. John Coombs. Michael Ross, pleased to meet you. He's the brains of the operation. Interesting place. We have a lot of meetings here. No chance getting sprung in this place. And we're all good Boy Scouts here. <laughs> We've uh, got a lot in common, us and you blokes. I established a reputation in this business, finding legitimate jobs for ex-servicemen. We entered into an agreement with Chris Corrigan in good faith, and now we've been made to look dishonest, corrupt. Our blokes have been called terrorists. Mercenaries. Mercenaries, yeah, that's right. And we're still having to push Corrigan to find jobs for our guys with a farmer's mob. He's been crook over it. Haven't you, matey? Well, we'd be very interested in having a look at these documents. Yeah, uh, especially anything that uh, implicates the government. These are copies. We have them certified with a registered accountant. See here? True and certified copy of the original. Signed. Also got transcripts of my meetings with Chris Corrigan. Told you we take insurance. Uh, Josh Bornstein's here to check your version of events with Chris Corrigan's evidence in court. <laughs> Corrigan wouldn't know the truth if it was up him in the Hall of Mirrors. How much do you want for all that? We're not in this for personal gain. That's right. Absolutely not. We just want compensation for our boys. The payments from Patrick to Finn West, implicating in bankroll in Dubai. Politically, that's... But they're copies. No, they could be certified pieces of dunny paper for all we know. Legally, they're useless. They'll be laughed out of court. It's just Mickey Mouse. These clowns aren't going to save our bacon before Easter. How oh, in the name of all that's holy did Chris Corrigan get into bed with them? Maybe he didn't plan his exit strategy either. Oh, fuck! <laughs> you all right, mate? Yeah. Hey, I, uh, I got us a silk. It's Julian Burnside. Burnside? No, no, no. He's corporate. He's never even touched IR. Yeah, a right-wing capitalist running dog has never even opened the legislation. It's perfect. Oh, I get it. He's a rock star. <sighs> what do you mean, rock star? Well, what bloody rock star? so much for coming here. Much more comfortable than Chambers. Josh, come in. John Coombs and Jeff. Section 298K is the guarantee of the right to freedom of association. Canberra stuck in there to legislate away compulsory unionism. But arguably, if you've got the right to not join a union, then you've also got the right to be a union member without being penalised for it. This is the Workplace Relations Act we're talking about? I've not read it. You don't mind if I smoke? I find it helps me to concentrate. I feel much the same way about Pepsi Cola, actually. More, uh, more tea, Jeff? Ah, uh, thanks. Uh, yeah, look, there's absolutely no doubt that Peter Reith, no thanks, is trying to make an example of this union. And if the MUA goes down, the CFMEU will be next, and then every other union in the country. You should know, uh, I'm not political, Jeff. To be honest, politics appalls me. Uh, uh, John and Greg are uh, anxious about the rumours that are circulating, talking about a move on the docks at Easter. It's only a, a couple of weeks away. So.
Sweetheart, what are you still doing awake? I just wanted to say hello. And I even kept my school shoes on, so I wouldn't get too comfortable and fall asleep. I was determined. You go back to your mum's tomorrow, don't you? And you've hardly seen me this time. All the time before. How about I sit here while you go to sleep, eh? I can read your tin tin if you like. And just talk. Of course. What do you want to talk about? I don't know, nothing really. It's good you can make time for me, Dad. It's called anchovy, isn't it? No wonder it tastes like shit. Greg, you chose this. I'd lose a limb for it, remember? Synchronicity. The two most important things in my life have happened at exactly the same time. I'll take you to Randwick. You'll come round. I'll even take you to Ascot. It's not that I can't fly. It's just I get this sweaty palm dry mouth kind of thing. I have been known to throw up. It's just terror. If anything, though, tonight, tonight you made me fly. I was right, I was right. Greg, Greg, Sean McSwain, we've got something. I got a call from one of the scabs, and uh, he's willing to talk. Yeah, I think you should hear this one for yourself, mate. OK. You Sean? Yeah. Get me out of here. Look, I've already told him everything I know. Well, tell us again. Patrick's are gonna sack all their blokes over Easter. They're training us to take over. Can I call my wife now? What do you mean all their blokes? All what blokes? Blokes that you did. Where? Here? Everywhere. The whole country. Well, every port in the country? That's what I said. Patrick's are planning to sack every one of the union workers in every port in the country. That's what I fucking said! Would you be prepared to say this on television? Yes. Uh, no. L I don't know. I need to talk to my wife. <laughs> what am I going to say to her? <laughs> Maybe you should tell her that Ben of Scabs on all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> what made you come forward now? Because oh, they're pricks, you know. <laughs> they treat you like shit. I mean, they promise you the world, but they treat you like shit. In what way? 
His phone bill? What? Uh, they wouldn't pay him a phone bill and the TV. Well, I mean, I, I can't pay it. I've, I've got a wife and two and a half kids to support. And it was two grand. Two grand? Yeah. You've been racking up debts on the porn channel, Danny boy. <laughs> Oh, well, that'll make a credible witness. So who told you about the plan to sack the workforce? What exactly did they say? Kev, uh, the blokes at Web Dock, uh, trainers blokes for the Farmers Federation, they kept saying, the shit's gonna hit the fan at Easter. <laughs> she will leave me. She will leave me and she take the kids. Okay, Dan, we have your wife standing by in Toowoomba. Uh, I'm gonna say to her. Hi, Mandy. Oh, am I on telly? Uh, no, we're just still setting a few things up, but feel free to talk to your husband if you want to. Hey, babe. Oh, you fuck with Dan. You're piss weak. You got, things go right for a change, and just typical, you have to go fuck it up. Oh, sometimes I think you're not right in the head, Dan Brody. Sometimes I think you're really some kind of fucking monger. Okay, I can't watch it. Good evening, viewers. Tonight we have the extraordinary allegations of Dan Brody, a young trainee stevedore with the National Farmers Federation's new stevedoring arm. Dan has made the astonishing claim that the managing director of Patrick Stevedores, Chris Corrigan, has planned to sack his entire workforce and crazy. replace them with non-union hmm. labour. How? He can't sack 2,000 people without being hit with an unfair uh, dismissal case. I just got tired yeah, of he can have redundancies, sick. but he can't sack the lot so unless he closes down, down the business. Well, maybe that's right. what he's doing. Just, no, not currently. There's too much money to be made. What I'm saying is true. That's why they don't want me to say it. And we have Dan's wife standing by in Toowoomba. Dan fled unemployment in Queensland to take this new job to support his young family. But his new bosses claim that he is a liar and a cheat. And what do you say to this, Mandy? All I can say is this. I have loved Dan Brody since the very first moment I saw him. And if he was any of those things that you just said, I never could have loved him. Never could have married him. How'd it go? It's good. Come on, Danny, where'll we get you home? I'm not going back to that hotel, all right? They'll kill me. No, 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 no. We'll put you somewhere safe tonight and we'll get you home to Toowoomba in the morning, all right? I think I'll fuck me marriage. You'll be right. Hello? Sean? Yeah. Yeah, mate, it's Gary Welsh. Uh, who? Yeah, the manager at Webb. Yeah, I'm up in the tower. Listen, if they find out I've been speaking to you, I'm gonna get the sack. Listen, mate, that, that kid on the TV last night, he's right. This is a crisis, folks. It's 10 days till Easter and all we've got is rumour and hearsay. Do you mean junked him against sacking the workforce? We haven't got enough to stand up in court. We've got Brody, worse than useless in a court of law. And we've got your manager. Well, he's a decent bloke, he's not bullshitting. I need him on the record. I need an affidavit from him, I need him in court. I said I wouldn't give him up, he'll lose his job. If we don't get this up, your entire membership are gonna lose their jobs. Son. Once they're outside the gates, we're going to have a bastard of a time getting them back Once in. Once they're outside the gates, we might have no chance at all of getting them back in. Bang goes the MUA. I'm sorry, I won't have him named. Can I have a quick word with you outside, mate? Are you out of your fucking mind? I don't know if you're across this yet, but this thing is bigger than one manager and one miserable job. It's bigger than one trade union. This is the thin end of the wedge for the entire labour movement. Can't you see that? 
Are you a complete fucking dropkick? Fuck! Any progress? Um, <clears throat> I'm sorry I can't stay around, but um, I've got a chunky move board meeting. A chunky what board meeting? A chunky move. They're a local dance group, contemporary dance. They're very good. Josh, that um, that thought you had earlier. What would happen if the workers were all sacked? Uh, they'd have to be reinstated. Any exceptions? If the company was going out of business. To do that, they'd have to dispose of all their assets. Correct. John Coombs writes a letter to Chris Corrigan asking him to deny the rumours and to guarantee that A, he won't dismiss the workforce, and B, he won't dispose of any assets. If he waffles around it, I think we might have just enough. Josh, have, uh, have you got a minute? Yeah. Told you he was a genius. In my experience in the law, I found it necessary to moderate the influences of ideology and passion. They tend to obscure the process of rational thought. If you want to save this union and win, wrestle with the passion, Josh. Bloody hell, Bermuda Gui Bell. Oh, I won 50 bucks on her. Oh, shit. Yeah. She's a champ. She came from behind, won by half a length with a hairline fracture in a fetlock and a jockey with a thyroid problem. John Coombs did spew if he knew I was here. Yeah? He'd spew if he thought I wasn't. How many nights have you been here? 59. Counting. Well, it must be popular at home. You got kids? Yeah, too. Can they visit? My wife left me. Oh. What? You know, it's Gap. Brody. Uh, we all thought you did his entrails and you ended up treating him like your long-lost brother. Sometimes I feel like eating someone's entrails. Corrigan or Reith or bloody scab up there in my crane. All this control, this layer of civility. Invented to stop us killing each other. I reckon it drives men mad. <laughs> See Podge over there? Sometimes I think maybe his way of doing it's the best. Just beat the living shit out of each other and see who's left standing at the end of it. <laughs> Lawyers aren't encouraged to win trials, except in billable units. Yeah? You did a good impression of it this afternoon. So. Sorry about that. Forget about it. It's nice to see a bloke in a suit with some blood in his veins. <laughs> long strike, a long industrial campaign. We've been under attack, and uh, quite frankly, mate, we've had a gutful. All we want to do is come to work, do a day's work, and, uh, and go home again. Is there the resolve there, though, to, to um, put up with a long campaign, a long fight with the government? We've come this far. We'll go right to the end. How long do you think that, that you can hold out for? As long as it takes. Will Melbourne have your support? Yeah, definitely, mate, yeah. yeah. It came to strike action. Hi. Uh oh. Sorry, day from hell. Well, you're not that solid. 
can just get picked off one by one, you know, if they start with this union, they can attack all the other unions, you know, everyone's got wife and families, they're scared of losing their jobs, you need security in your job, that's the main thing, you know, like I come to work all the time, once a week. Oh God, God, this is embarrassing. <laughs> Come over, he says. I'll cook for you, wine, dine, and seduce you. And here I am. Start as you mean to go on, I guess. <sighs> it occurs to me I haven't moved far from my roots. Middle class boy, middle class law firm. Nice Jewish girlfriend. <laughs> what, what can I possibly know about what those men are going through? All the education, all the privilege can only mean something if I can help them. If the law doesn't deliver justice, then what the fuck am I doing here? What are any of us doing here? Do you want me to go? No. no fuck no. I'm scared, that's all. I'm shit scared. I promised them something I can't deliver. Did you? Well, why don't you get Petra to put a band-aid on it? Okay. Now, I, I don't want you staying up for me tonight, all right? You just go to bed and I'll see you in the morning. Okay. Yeah. I love you, sweetheart. Okay. Bye. Burnside gave me some very Burnside-like advice today. He told me to wrestle with my passions. Can I watch? The 24 hour rule. Let 24 hours pass before you respond to any impulse. Which is what I should do. But the impulse to say this is kind of overwhelming. I think I'm falling in love with you. <sighs> You're not promising something you can't deliver? Oh, man, I hope not. <laughs> I fucking hope not. Josh. Sorry, you awake? Mate, you are not going to believe this. Can I come over? Shaking. What? Well, there's no fax numbers on these? Nothing. Just came through the machines. No cover, no identification, nothing. Are they legit? Well, forgeries. It's been known to happen. Yeah, sure, could be. But if they're not, then this is Howard's signature. On a document that authorises what is it? The interventionist strategy on the waterfront. The Prime Minister's signature. Yeah, but it still doesn't link them to Corrigan, though, does it? Not yet, but we'll find it. Do you know what this means? Um, that we might have enough. This means we could bring down the government. Shit. Calm, 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 calm. 24-hour rule, Josh. Well, fuck it. We could bring down the government, Greg. We could bring down the government. So there's no point telling you to settle? Tali. Greg, Greg, Tali, I'm in love with her. Oh, congratulations. Yeah, Greg and I are going to bring down the government. What do you think of that? <laughs> You've been saying for some time that you think there's some sort of unholy conspiracy going on. Too right, I have. We now have indisputable proof that this thing goes all the way to the upper echelons of the government. have lodged an application for an injunction to stop you dismissing the workforce. Which court? Federal. It's going to be heard on Wednesday, day after tomorrow. Shit, shit. Shit. We lose this chance, we'll never get it again. We'll be stuck in this fucking quagmire for another 15 years. And the rest? Well, there's no other option. We'll have to move it forward. Are we ready? Well, we'll have to be. This is going to get really ugly. Yes, I know that. 
No, no, I mean really ugly. The boss of the Chubb team told me that, in his estimation, you got about a 50% chance of getting out of this alive. I'd appreciate it if you didn't repeat that to Valerie. She and the kids fly out this afternoon. Oh, and uh, I have to ask this, because I'm the mug who's going to have to spin it. The dogs? Yeah, well, I said I didn't want them, and they said we had no choice. I mean, if the wharfies decide to trash the sites, they haven't got enough men to stop them. I mean, those cranes take six months to repair. If they're down that long, the whole plan will collapse. Well, 50%, eh? So what's it going to be? Johnny Coombs coming at me with a, with a six-gun. Actually, I'd quite enjoy that. <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs>